On uh, 27 April 2011, I was starting my day out uh, like any other day when I was in Afghanistan. I got with my interpreter, Musa, and we went over to the Afghan Air Force Base headquarters uh, there in Kabul at the International Airport. And uh, we did our normal advising session, mentoring session with the Afghan uh, Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force. So at about 10, a little after 10 o'clock in the morning, I, uh, Musa and I walked back to our headquarters building. And as soon as we walked in the door uh, of our Afghan, uh, of our headquarters there uh, in Kabul, we started getting some reports, uh, basically folks uh, in the building, you know, shouting out that there had been a shooting uh, in the building Musa and I had just left. The first shirt and myself had uh, kitted up and responded over uh, to the building. We'd got a couple of up armored vehicles. Uh, we met a medic at the door, a Master Sergeant Chris Banks, uh, who was just an absolute hero that day, and uh, met us at the door and told us that we had nine down. And uh, I'd asked him, you know, is it nine Afghans, nine Americans? And he says, Chief, they're all, they're all Americans. They're all our advisors, and uh, there's, not, there's nine of them. So for the next several days, uh, you know, that was a full-time job, getting our folks over uh, to be seen by the combat stress team. I mean, as you can imagine, um, we go through combat skills training before you deploy. We went with all the same folks. You go to Afghanistan with them, and then you live in a dorm room with them for a year, training an Afghan. So you grow some, uh, some very strong friendships. And, uh, so what we had at the end of the day was nine, you know, airmen who had no roommate anymore. You know, their cross-fit buddy was gone. Um, the guy they flew with all the time was gone. So, you know, the, the ones who were left behind were just really in a stupor. And it was such a struggle in many ways because, all, you know, although we had lost friends that we had known for a year almost, um, in many cases, I mean, the, you know, the, you know the, the sad reality of it was we all knew that some families were going to get a really bad call um, the next day. We've got a little flag honor guard right in front of us. And then 10 Humvees come from the distance, a few miles away. You can see the, you know, the headlights and the Humvees coming from way off in the distance. And they pull up right in front of us and they line up on each side of us, um, flanking the C-17. So there were eight airmen pallbearers uh, for each one of the transfer cases or caskets. And they stood up, you know, um, one at a time and they each picked up a casket and they walked down the back of the Humvee and they all lined up the back of the C-17. So you had 72 uh, airmen pallbearers lined up with flag draped coffins. And behind us, there were thousands of uh, Bagram teammates out there to, to say goodbye. And uh, I think about these, these folks every day. Every day when I think about, you know, sacrifice and honor, I think about those folks. And, uh, you know, every time I look up at the flag when the National Anthem plays, you know, those are the faces I see. You know, I don't see Lee Greenwood. I see Joe Frugge, and I see Andrew Gear. You know, I, I see folks that I know are heroes and uh, put their blood, sweat, and tears in Afghanistan and left a few friends behind. Thank you.